I've built a couple of custom bikes over the years, both solo and as part of a team. And on occasion, I've had cause to ask myself, is all of this, is all of this really worth it? Why am I doing this? Why spend so much of my life here? You see, I say that and then like 10 minutes later, I'm like, this is my new project. It's a 1975 Honda CP750F. The F stands for Super Sport. I have been planning this build for years, but I could never commit to the kind of budget that this project really needed. Until I got a message from a local guy who was selling his project bike plus a ton of very high-end parts so that he could focus on his burgeoning small business which is a sacrifice that I can certainly empathize with. But we'll talk about that later. I did not have room for another motorcycle, but a lot of those parts would fit on my bike. Not everything here is gonna be going on that bike. Some of it I'll keep for later projects, other stuff I might sell on in the future. Uh, but most of this is gonna be going on that CB750 and there is nothing you can do to stop me. So that is the how, how I got the parts. And I will talk about the what, what I'm gonna do with them, but we should also think about the why. Why am I doing this? Is the why profit? When people hear the word profit, they think money, and rightly so. But when you engage with a hobby or a craft, and I'm speaking generally here, getting paid is not the only form of recompense that makes it worthwhile. See, this is going to be a personal build for me. Uh, I doubt I'm going to sell this thing unless somebody makes a completely ludicrous offer because it's hard to get your money back out of a project like this, let alone be profitable. Uh, you put $10,000 worth of parts into a bike that's worth five and you spend a couple hundred hours doing it? Do the math. It's hard to find somebody that's willing to spend $25,000 on a 50-year-old used Honda. You really have to be at the top of your game in order to ask for the kind of money that makes this worthwhile from a business perspective. Well, if profit's not the motive, then what is? Is it to show off, look cool? Anyway, I have a pretty solid idea of what I'm gonna do with this bike. It's gonna be kind of a return to my roots kind of thing, a Honda Cafe Racer, just elevated. We're going upside down forks from an R6, Olin's rear shocks, a full suite of Moto Gadget componentry, these incredible custom spoke wheels from Cognito Moto. Pair that with a custom handmade four into one exhaust system and a few other goodies, and we're gonna have a pretty rad street bike. Let's see if the old warhorse will fire up. Yeah, well, I didn't really touch her all year, so yeah, to be expected. Now, of course, I want this thing to look great, to look cool. I want to bring it to people and show it to them and say, I made this. Uh, I don't think that there's a craftsman or an artist out there who would deny thinking that sort of thing. And it's not just bikes, it's, it's everything. It's pottery or sculpture or writing a book. Looking good is part of it. It's just not the main priority. Because, listen, if you're going to build a bike and the only reason you're doing it is because you want a cool bike or to meet girls or whatever, consider buying one that's already finished. I can get you a great deal on a used Honda for only $25,000. Honestly, though, I think you'll be happier and there's nothing wrong with doing that as long as you're honest about it. I think it'll even be cheaper in the long run I mentioned sacrifice earlier, and while I don't pretend like I've ever had any great sacrifice in my life, I've made choices to be here and let other options pass me by. 
Uh, you know, because I love cool bikes and great rides and all that. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here because I love the process of making them. I like bike building because the process can be as complicated as I want it to be. Engine building or, or machining on the mill is methodical and precise versus the sheer power of fabricating. Uh, you're bending metal, melting it together. A welder's like basically a glue gun. It's kind of mind-blowing. And I think it's something that's taken for granted in our modern day. I really love coming up with a design, form and color, laying out paint. That sort of creative expression is really satisfying. And then seeing that image in your head come to life in front of you is exhilarating. And then there's the opposite. Lacing up a wire spoke wheel is meditative. It's calm, quiet. A bike is big enough that its complexity keeps you engaged long term, but it's not so big that you can't do it all yourself. Uh, and I don't mean to disparage anybody's obsessions, that's just the why of mine. So I know that the topic of this video is that bike in particular and bike building in general, but I think like the, what I'm trying to say here is more universal than that. Uh, you know, we could be talking about pottery or photography or any number of different things. You just, you gotta love the process. You gotta love doing it for its own sake. And one of those things could be making videos. You could replay this video considering that I'm thinking the same things about that camera as I am about that bike. I want to try new shots. I want to try new forms of storytelling. I have learned so much since that first video in December 2020. I could barely use the camera. I knew even less about editing. Now I can revisit some of those topics with a lot more experience under my belt and love for the process. This is a topic that is near and dear to me. Does that make me a pretentious prick? Yeah, I mean, yes, obviously it does. But I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. I always appreciate the comments, the likes, the subscriptions. Even the negative ones, usually. And I know that I promised to talk about sacrifice later. But, I mean, I think considering the context of the issue, it's probably worth its own video. So stay tuned for that.